May it please the court, honorable judge, jury, ladies and gentlemen, I've brought but one thing to this case, a promise. With a promise follows responsibilities. And the responsibility of an educational system is a promise to the boys and girls of this country that, they, that says they will be taught the rudimentary skills that will prepare them for society. But is that promise kept when a teenager, once a boy, after 13 years of school, cannot fill out a simple job application? Is that responsibility when a school stamps a boy as, quote, lazy while entirely neglecting to see to it that he gets the appropriate education? Ladies and gentlemen, the defendant witness, Dr. D Terry Priest, through his testimony, has shown us that the educational system was fundamentally flawed. It provided education only for the well-off. The education it provided required the undivided participation of the student's parents, something that Chris's mother unfortunately could not provide because she was working full-time in a cleaning company to support her children. Ms. Leslie Brown's testimony has shown us that despite her good intentions, her teaching methods had contributed to the negligence and, the crip and crippled Chris's ability to read. Mr. Alex Lloyd's testimony has proven that his own development in his reading and reading skills was greatly influenced by his mother and his stepfather's active participation in the educational process. But we've also heard from Chris he lives in a one-room apartment with his mother and his little brother. His mother has to work full-time at the cleaning company to support her family. It's glaringly obvious that the Chris's mother couldn't participate in her son's education because she had to support her family. But for supporting her family, should the price to pay be the school's complete negligence towards Chris's education? Should the price to pay be the accusations of Dr. Terry Priest that Chris and his mother had failed Chris in his academic ability? No. Our witness, Dr. Jerry Stein, has told us that school was negligent for not even being remotely concerned about the academic levels of Chris. That there were ways that the school clearly ignored that could have brought Chris's academic skills up to par without the help of his overworked mother. But the school was so lackluster in its test that even a boy who could not read could pass those tests. The school was, did not follow many of the district's policies. The school did not contact Chris's mother or assume any action when Chris's attendance declined. The school did not give Chris a chance to evaluate himself again when he missed the eighth grade standardized test. The school merely passed Chris through each grade, each and every grade, as if the school wanted to get him off its hands. Our last witness, Sidney Payne, has informed you of the reality of the educational negligence rampant in our public school today. Contrary to what the defense's closing had said, in a civil case like this, the burden of proof is by a preponderance of evidence that the one side's evidence should outweigh the others to win. The plaintiff's evidence has clearly outweighed the defendant's. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a chance to make our society better. This is a chance to reestablish the fundamental basis of our society, public education, that has grown complacent. This is a chance to keep that promise to the boys and girls of this country. This, a promise that was once made to a little boy in the county of Metroville, who, cannot, who now cannot even fill out a job application. Let's keep that promise. Vote on the plaintiff's side is not only a vote for Chris, but a vote for the generations for our, of our children to come. Thank you. Okay.